For decades, leadership experts, managers, and life coaches have focused on projecting an image of competence, power, and poise under pressure. In past blogs and books, I too have written about personal presence. For example, in my book, Creating Personal Presence, look, talk, think, and act like a leader. But occasionally, leaders overvalue the importance of demonstrating competence and power at the expense of demonstrating their warmth. That's especially common for people striving for leadership positions. What some forget, the first step in leadership is trustworthiness. To pass the trustworthiness test, both warmth and competence need to come through in your everyday body language and in your speaking style. You demonstrate competence with a confident tone, bold statements, and passionate opinions. Vocal variety that includes proper inflection, appropriate volume, proper intensity, and a moderated speaking rate also underscores competence as you build your case. Animation, expressive gestures, purposeful movement, your walk, a firm handshake, and sustained eye contact. These all demonstrate competence. But powerful, confident leaders often have difficulty adding warmth. That is, without diminishing the quality of confidence. They may feel warmth, but that attitude may not be reflected as they speak. In fact, powerful f people frequently receive feedback that they're intimidating, aggressive, or overpowering. To add warmth to a confident demeanor when you present, to, when you present formally or carry on a conversation, consider these tips. Lead by asking reflective questions rather than always just making statements. Refrain from asking so many questions that people around you feel cross-examined. Call audience members by name when you speak to them or give a keynote. Names add a personal touch. It lets people know that you're really listening to them and you're aware that they're present. Ask listeners to share illustrations and examples to help you make your points. Add humor. Lighten up a little bit. Be in the moment with people. Less scripted. Less formal. Use more upward rather than downward gestures. When you're pointing, that, that's more uh, aggressive. Use outward, inclusive gestures rather than circular gestures toward the trunk of your body. Avoid staccato hand chops into the air. Avoid pointing your fingers at people. Move closer to the audience. If you're speaking, walk out toward the group. But of course, not into their physical space. And avoid putting barriers like a lectern or a table between you and them. Smile when appropriate. Smiling will soften your tone of voice. And keep a pleasant expression on your face. Unless, of course, you're, you're talking about a serious subject. And avoid a, a rigid, stiff posture. Modulate your speaking rate and your tone and your sentence patterns. You don't ever want to sound like you've memorized a script. Even your dress conveys your attitude. Are you serious in all business? Are you casual and friendly or wacky and uncontrollably creative? Or maybe you're just timid and understated. Bold, confident, aggressive. Your dress says a lot. Nonprofit organizations particularly report that there's a significant difference in contributions depending on the, the venue of the meeting and how people dress as they walk into the room. That, that communicates a lot and it changes the amount of money that they give. Demonstrate confidence and competence by all means, but it's warmth that first attracts others and makes them want to trust you and connect with you as a leader.